stop doing those things. Pray for today. Good evening. This time we're going to ask everybody that will to come up into the choir. And uh, Wavery had told me this evening, uh, he said, he said uh, we need to stand a little closer to the microphones. And I said, well, I've got a solution to that. Um, so if I can get about 20 people that don't even sing to get in the back, force everybody that sings in the front. Uh, so if you want to come up and stand, if you want to come up and sing, Come on up, we're going to sing out of the black book. Stand in the back. <laughs> Thank you. 
Anybody have a song on your heart? If not, I want to thank the choir for coming up and singing. Appreciate that. Um, this time I'm going to ask Dylan if he would to take us to the Lord in prayer. Super Bowl today. Amen. It's good to be back in God's house tonight. Appreciate each one of coming out and being with us tonight. If you got your Bible, turn with me over to Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37, I, I believe this is good word, it will be an encouragement to every one of us I believe, and I thank God for his word and things that he showed me, and, and probably other people have seen this a lot of times, but I, I thank him for what he showed me and it's an encouragement to me, but uh, how many has ever noticed that a lot of things that happen in our life are not good? Probably a lot of people have noticed that. Many things come our way that are not necessarily good, and a lot of things come our way that are really bad, right? And so, um, but it's important for us to remember and to know that all things work together for good to those that love God. I was thinking about that, and we'll, we'll turn over there and read that over in Romans 8, 28 here just in a little bit. But I remember uh, talking to, Brother Newton Phillips uh, several years ago and maybe we was down there to see him or whatever or maybe in whenever his wife passed away or whatever but uh, you know he looked at me and he said all things are not good that's for sure but he said I'm satisfied that all things work together for good they work together for good and uh, you know I've thought about that won't never forget him telling me that and uh, you know he'd had some years of experience to know and to see that, that uh, God's good, and even when things are bad, God's got a plan, and, you know, God will work things together, and, and I won't forget that, and the older I get, maybe the more gray hairs it gets there, the more I can look back. We talked a little bit about this in Sunday school this morning back there, but the older we get, we'll see and, and notice this, that uh, we can look back and see things that happen. Boy, I don't know why this is going on, or why that had to happen that way, or this or that, and then years later, we can look back and say, uh-huh, you know, I can see now. And, and everything that bad that happens is I'm not going to get up here and tell you that you'll figure it out. There's some things maybe that will happen and we'll not figure it out why it happened until we get over to the other side. But there will be things that, that we'll see how it all comes together and see God was working through that. God had a plan. But uh, as, as I thought about all that, you know, we just need to, we need to know and remember that because all things won't be good, okay, all things ain't going to be good. It's not going to be a bed of roses. Uh, because all things uh, won't be good, you know, that's just the way it is. But don't be discouraged. Don't lose heart. You know, God's got a, a, a bigger and a better plan. I don't know if some of y'all probably listen to the Southern Gospel a little bit, but Kenton Junction, that's a group that sings on the Southern Gospel. Matthew Hagee sings with them. John Hagee's son uh, they are the preachers from San Antonio, Texas, but they sang that song Kenton Junction does. God's got a better plan. He said, it's so much wiser than the ways of man. Put it all in his able hand. He knows what to do. You know, a lot of times that's what we got to do, just put it in his hand. He knows what to do. We don't and, uh, and know that God's got a, got a better plan. But there's no better uh, story in the Bible, and we can see that through God's word, things that happened that was bad, and, and then God turned it around to work out good. We can probably see things in our lives that come our way and happen, and, and we can look back and say, God worked that out for good. I can tell that for sure. 
every one of us, but there's no better story maybe in the Bible than the story of Joseph over in Genesis chapter 37 and, and some following chapters. You know, if you want to turn with me and read there, and we won't read it all. Um, you know, I really don't know what I will read of this story. I may just tell you a lot, but, uh, you know, Joseph, he was, he was one of the 12 sons of Jacob, and, you know, God had a plan. You can't read this and see that God had a plan, uh, then you need to slow down and read it again. I'll just say that. Uh, but God had a plan, and he had a plan to, to create a bunch of people, his people, the children of Israel, and this was all part of the plan. But if we'll look back and, and study and read, you know, Jacob had the 12 sons, and, and um, you know, it wasn't no secret, Joseph was the favorite. That was just the way it was. Joseph was the favorite, and, and you know, when they's a pet out of the family, he, he became uh, the enemy of the other sons. How about that? Not the little one, you know. The, the little son wasn't. He was, hadn't come along yet, the latest one there. But uh, the other ten brothers, they pretty much hated Joseph because he was the pet. But Joseph, uh, he was connected with God, I believe. And Joseph seen things that God gave him. Yeah, Joseph had dreams. Some of his dreams he might have been better off keeping to himself for a while. Uh, and some of those dreams that he explained and shared with his brothers and his mom and dad brought some of the problems maybe on him. But uh, they didn't help him gain the more favor with those ten brothers. I'll just put it that way. But it says that, that Joseph's brothers, their, their, um, their, I guess, enmity against him turned into hatred. And, uh, and, and there one day we would read and study that, that his brothers took him and some of them had in mind of killing him. They had in mind of killing Joseph. And, and uh, one of the brothers, uh, maybe Reuben, he, he didn't want to go that far. Uh, matter of fact, he just seemed to, he maybe wanted to see Joseph suffer a little, but he didn't want to see him killed, maybe. And, and uh, so we, let's just throw him in a pit. Let's throw him in a pit. Let's don't kill him. They're way away from home. And we'll see that they throw Joseph in a pit. And long story short, they decided not to kill him. Uh, we would remember this. They decided not to kill him. But they said, uh, there comes a bunch from Egypt. Let's just sell him. Let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and and. And, you know, uh, one thing, we get rid of him. Second thing, we get a little profit out of it. You know, he's gone. We never have to see him again. Uh, you know, we wanted rid of him, but this way at least we won't have to kill him. So certain ones of those brothers, you say, that's a terrible thing. It was a terrible thing. I don't see nothing good about it, do you? It is an awful thing. Joseph was uh, a, a good feller, and, and then his brothers do this to him, and it was an awful bad thing, but it happened, okay? And as we read uh, down through there, they come along there. They bought Joseph. They took him off uh, down there to Egypt. He became a slave. And, and you can go back and read it if you want to. And I want us to remember this tonight. All the bad things that happened to Joseph, you can look back over there and, and look. And it'll say, and God was with him. Amen. Okay? And God was with him. So, so I want to think tonight and, and make you think and remember too. And this is a side note tonight. But when them bad things come our way, and we can look back and say, boy, that was bad, that was right. But God was with us. Amen. But God was with us when them bad things come. We'll have to say that, I believe. We'll have to look back and say God was with us. As we go on over through here, we would study and we would read in chapter 39 of the book of Genesis. We'd see that, that God was with Joseph. He was still down there as a slave, but it said that he was brought into a fellow's house named Potiphar. And you say, boy, things is looking up. He gained position in Potiphar's house there in Egypt. Potiphar was an officer of Pharaoh and, uh, you know, kind of getting on pretty high up in the, in, the, in the ranks there. He became a slave, let's say a servant there in the house of Potiphar down there in Egypt. Uh, still not at home, still a slave, still not free, but God was with him. And you'll notice that everywhere Joseph was at, God blessed him. He prospered, okay? We can read that in God's Word. And uh, still not good, but looking up. How about that? Things is looking up. And he was there in Potiphar's house, and, uh, and, and he was a servant for a while, and then he was put in charge of this, then he was put in charge of that, and then before you know it, it said that Potiphar put him in charge of everything. He was in charge of the whole household. 
It said that it, a lot of things Potiphar didn't even know because uh, Joseph took care of it, okay? And that was going real good. And you say, boy, God, really working good right there. And then, boom, Potiphar's wife uh, maybe falls in love or falls in lust with Joseph. She decides she needs to have Joseph. And and uh, and, and uh, what, a, what a bad deal that is. And, and Joseph said, I can't do that. He said, that'd be sinning against God. I'm not going to have no part of that. And it just kept on and on, and the temptation come on and on. And finally, one day, her and Joseph was the only ones in the house. And she said, here you go now. And he said, oh, no, we don't. And he fled, left her holding his jacket or coat in his hand right there. And you say, oh, man, that's a, that's a bad thing. It was a bad thing because she went right and said, look, look this coat, this Egyptian, or this is, is Israelite fellow, this slave, he's come in here and tried to force himself on me made up awful lie on Joseph and you say boy that's terrible that's awful it's something like that he was trying to do what was right have you ever noticed we talked about this a little bit back in Sunday school this morning sometimes when you try to do what's right you think I'll try to do what's right and then everything will be good and easy sometimes you do what's right and it may get harder okay Joseph did what was right he said I'm not going to sin against God you know what it got him throw it into prison Throw it into prison because who's Potiphar going to believe? Uh, this slave, this servant, he's a good fellow. He's in charge of everything, but he's going to believe his wife, right? Uh, he's not going to let think that she was lying about this because it would have made her look even worse. They said, that rascal, we'll throw him in prison. It said they throwed him in prison, but not just any prison. Folks, God's got a bigger plan, all right? Not just any prison did he throw him into, but he throwed him into a prison that said was for Pharaoh's uh, 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 people that was, was bad in Pharaoh's eyes, a prison for, for Pharaoh's prisoners. A certain spot he was put. You know, this is just the way it is. God worked that out. So you say, boy, I thought Joseph was climbing up and doing good in a bad situation. It started turning good, and now it's awful. Here he is, found himself down there in prison. Not only is he a slave, but worse than that, now he's in prison. But you know what it said? And God was with him. And God was with him. It wasn't long after uh, he was thrown into prison there, he began finding favor in, in the prison there. And wouldn't you know it, he was put in charge of the whole jail right there. Pretty much put in charge. The keeper of the prison uh, didn't look on anything, it says, because he just let Joseph take care of things. And lo and behold, over in chapter 40, we would see that a day come along, and, and you remember... Uh, Joseph had those dreams. I told you he had those dreams. And, and those dreams, we'll jump on back and review just for a minute. Those dreams he, he had kind of appeared that, that he said, I, I had a dream and it appeared to me that all my brothers bowed down to me. And then he had another dream and he said, it appeared to me in that dream that, uh, that my father and mother bowed down to me. And that was some dreams that kind of got him where he was at because like I say, he told it and they said, that Ray, you know, it just ate him alive that he would even mention them bowing down to him. Well, those dreams continued on. As we got over in, into chapter 40 right here, uh, and not only did Joseph have dreams and have the interpretations for him, but other people could have dreams, and Joseph could interpret those dreams. You know, God was with him. And it says that there was come a day there in Pharaoh's prison that, that uh, Joseph was there, and it said there was two men come from Pharaoh's household, right from the very household, right from the castle. One of them was the baker, one of them was the butler. And they come in there, and they was prisoners there. And, of course, Joseph probably got to know them. And, 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 and I believe on the same night, maybe, both of these fellas, they had dreams. They said, we've had, had these dreams, uh, troubling dreams. Uh, we don't know what they mean. And Joseph said, well, you know, tell me about it. Maybe I can figure it out, tell you what's going on. Well, long story short, they had these dreams, and Joseph told him. He said, "Well, well, to the I believe it was to the baker. He said, you know, you've got this dream. Looks to me like in a few days Pharaoh's gonna uh, have you took out of prison, take you out of jail, and and have you hanged." Okay, I thought he must have really burnt the groceries that baker must have, you know. But nevertheless, he was gonna be hanged. So he got good news. But 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 Joseph said to the to the butler there, he said, "I I believe." that your dream shows that, that Pharaoh's going to restore you to your position. You're going to be back answering the door 
at Pharaoh's house just before you know it. One of them had a good interpretation, the other not so not so good at all. So so as we read on right there, sure enough, boom, the baker was brought out of the prison, took out there and hanged. We would look down there that the butler, it said his position was restored, and Joseph told him there before he left, he said, now when you get back home to your job in the Pharaoh's uh, house there, he said, remember me, remember me. But the last verse is right here in verse 22, or verse 22 of chapter 4 says, and, and he was restored, the chief butler was, but he forgot about Joseph, you know. Seems like he can't get a break. This is going on for years, folks. This is going on for years. And, you know, but God was with Joseph. All these bad things happening because God's got something good going to happen, okay? These bad things is happening, but God's in control. But Joseph was forgotten until one day, chapter 41, it said, and we would remember probably this story, but if you don't listen real close, it said that Pharaoh had a dream. Pharaoh now... The most powerful man in the world, no doubt, at the time. The king of Egypt down there, uh, he had a dream. And uh, long story short, he had a dream. So they was, uh, 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 was uh, the, the, about the cows. And, and some of the cows were real, um, I believe it was uh, seven real pretty fat ones. And they was real pretty and looked good. And then all of a sudden, they was seven real skinny and bony cows come up and eat all the fat ones. And then the same way with some stalks of corn. So many stalks of corn, just real pretty and had big ears of corn on them. And then all of a sudden some old withered up, uh, something about like I'd grow, Chad, some withered up no account corn growed up and swallowed all them good ones. And it was just like the good never even happened. And Pharaoh's trouble over this dream. And he's a fretting and a wondering. Uh, the king was there. And bing, the butler says, I know a feller. I remember him back down there in prison. Joseph. Joseph was his name. He could interpret dreams. And I bet he could interpret your dream, Pharaoh. So send for him. Go get him. So they bring him up there, bring Joseph. Now somebody was a slave in a pit, just that close to being killed by his own brothers. Okay? And a slave in a pit, then a servant, then thrown in jail. And all this, but God was with him the whole time, and now he's brought to the king's palace, Pharaoh's palace. And the dream was told to Joseph, and you can guess it. Uh, Joseph said, here's what it means. Here's what it means. He said, there's going to be uh, the famine's going to last this many years, or the good times is going to last this many years. Everything's going to grow plentifully. And I tell you what we need to do, we need to save everything that we can grow because there's going to be that many more years, same amount of years is going to come, and you ain't going to be able to grow nothing. It's just going to be nothing. going to be a drought sticking, stricken. I mean, uh, whatever can happen is going to happen. So we'll need all that good. And Pharaoh said, I'll tell you what. He said, you've determined, uh, to, uh, told me that dream. He said, you've showed me this. He said, and, and I believe there's no better man uh, to, figure, to lead this whole deal through these next years, he said, I'm going to put you in. You're going to be the vice president. How about that? You're going to be the prime minister, uh, Joseph, so brought from a, a being thrown into a pit by his brothers to die, then thrown into to jail, and then brought out of jail, and now he's second in command, as far as in the powerful in the world. You know, Pharaoh was the most powerful man in the world, and here Joseph is. You know, ain't nobody could do that but God. It said the whole time through there, God was with him. But all them things was bad. Are you with me tonight? All them things that was bad is working to something that turned out good. So it said that Joseph was put in charge and sure enough they growed the crops and they stored what they needed to. They, kept, they took care of it and all. And they was the only country that was doing that. Okay? They was the only ones that was saving. So at one of these days, you probably remember the rest of the story, but one of these days the whole rest of the world was going to have to come down to Egypt or starve, okay? Because Egypt was prepared. They was only prepared because Joseph was led by God to, to show them how to prepare. And so they was prepared, and, and of course we know probably the rest of the story. It wasn't, wasn't long after the seven, the seven years of good uh, came about and went. Then the seven years of bad started, 
and people started getting hungry everywhere. And they started coming from everywhere. And yes, they started coming from Israel also. Or, or we, won't, we won't call it Israel because it was Canaan's what it was. They didn't actually become the children of Israel until after this. But it was the Canaanite, I guess the one, the, uh, Joseph's family, uh, Jacob's family. They were there in Canaan. He said, hey, I heard, boys, that they got food. They got corn. They got grain down there in Egypt. I'm going to send you all down there. You know what a reunion that was. I read that so many times, and I think, boy, only God could work a deal out like this. You know, those boys, they had sold their brother in a slave. They went down there. Who would you have to buy the grain from? Joseph. You went down there to get grain, and Joseph had changed. You know, this is, I wrote it down there somewhere, but I believe it's been like 13 or 14 years. Since, you know, he was, that's what it was. He was 17, 13 years. He was 17 years old when they throwed him into the pit. He was 17 years old when they sold him, and now he's 30 years old. He's the prime minister of, of Egypt. He's down there. They've got to come. He looks different, all right? He's learned, no doubt, to talk Egyptian language. Everything's different, but he recognized them, okay? And he's seen them, and we could read, and, and you ought to go back and read that because he messed with them a lot, okay? When I mean he messed with them, he played some games with them, and they deserved every bit of it, right? They deserved all of it for what they did. But over a period of time, he messed with them boys, and, and finally, though, he couldn't help it, and he revealed to them who he was. And don't you know they were shocked that their other brother was, and he was the one that they was bowing down to, just like the dreams. And, and then, of course, long story short, he said, well, it's about my daddy. If he's still alive, if he's still alive, go get him and bring him down here. And they brought him down, and they all, uh, uh, they all come down there, lived in Egypt there while the, the famine and all that took place. But I do want to read this part over here, if you'll turn with me to the 50th uh, chapter of Genesis. This is the last chapter of Genesis. Very easy to find. But the 50th chapter, verse 15, if we uh, look back all the story and, and then we get to right here, Jacob has died, all right? Jacob, the father, has died. And now what would you think if you was one of them ten brothers? You'd probably think what them ten brothers think. I think when daddy's gone, we've had to lick, okay? We've had to lick when daddy's gone because Joseph's going to, he's going to have our heads, you know. That's what they thought, and we'd probably think the same thing if we'd have done that. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly requit us all the evil which we did unto him. That means pay us back heavily. In other words, give us what we deserve. Jo uh, Jacob had died. The brothers got together, the ten bad brothers there that had part in all this deal. They got together, and they said, we've had it. When daddy's gone, we had it. Daddy's gone now, we've had it. We might as well get ready. And they sent a messenger, and, and, and they wasn't the only ones that thought that. Jacob told them. He said, boys, you better go bow down to the brother. You better go talk to Joseph when I'm gone, because you just probably had it. You probably had it. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of God, of, of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. Joseph's a better feller than they was, okay? He's a better feller probably than I am. I'd, I'd have probably been, uh, uh, maybe, maybe, I, maybe I'd have been satisfied with messing with him and getting, getting even with him with the things he did, but... You know, we'd still, that, that was a pretty hard pill to swallow. But Joseph was a man of God. Joseph, uh, God was with him. Joseph wept when they told him that. They said, Daddy, Daddy said you'd have us. You'd have our hide when he's gone. You know, and he asked that we'd come to you and ask you to forgive us. We pray to God you'd forgive us. And Joseph wept. And Joseph, see, see Joseph's seen the bigger picture. We can see the bigger picture. Hopefully you'll get out of this tonight. When bad things come, there is a bigger picture one day. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I, I, I in, um, he said, Fear not, for am I in the place of God. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, 
but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. He said, yeah, it was bad. He said, it was bad what y'all did. They wasn't, I didn't see a whole lot of good in it at all when it was happening, did you? But can you see how it all come around to good? It all come around. He said, God had a plan. God had a plan that all that bad y'all did, all them bad things that happened to me was meant to save many people alive. You know, if that famine had come and nobody's prepared, I guess about everybody would have died, okay? But God put Joseph there, and, and not only just to keep them alive, but, but God had a plan to get them. How do you get Jacob's family all down there? You know, Jacob's family is Israel, okay? God took them all down to Egypt because 400 years later or so, 400 plus a few more years later, they come out of there, and they wasn't just uh, Jacob's family. There's over a million of them, I guess, and they was the children of Israel, okay? Big plan, even bigger than saving them from being uh, starving. You know, that was where God's people were kind of, God's people was, was, was born at, there in Egypt. They come out of Egypt as God's people. He says, now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you. He said, I'm going to take care of you, take care of your little ones. He comforted them and spake kindly unto them. He said, because you meant it for evil. You know, the devil, I think, a lot of times does a lot of bad things, and no doubt he means it for evil, you know, but God can, can work things out to good. As I thought about that, you know, we need to, again, we need to remember that all things won't be good, but, but God can take things that are not good and he can turn them into something that is good. Uh, there was a couple in the church here this morning. Uh, they were sitting right back there. They had never been here before. I talked to the fella, uh, uh, I don't know, a few weeks back. Talked to him by text. I told him I was out here at the church now. And uh, I, I sort of felt like he was a Christian fella. And pretty sure he was a Christian fella. I'll just put it that way. But I was telling my, uh, Roxy there, I said, I, I texted him there. I said, we're out at this church. And he didn't respond nothing. Nothing back. And I said, well, I think that fella is a Christian fella. Uh, and I think he would like coming to church. But, but anyway, I thought that's kind of odd. I didn't get no response. But I walked back through there this morning. And he was sitting right there, him and his wife. Well, lo and behold, uh, he's telling me back yonder as he went out, but I know that they lived down there in Florida. I believe it was that was Hurricane Ian, that one that come back in September down there and did so much devastation and killed a lot of people there in Florida, come right through his neighborhood, okay? And he'd sent me pictures back when all that happened. and You know, he, he was like devastated. You know, their, their business was wiped out. Um, a lot of people in his neighborhood was killed and all that. So as he's going out the door the other day, and I was glad to see him. Like I say, he still ain't responding to the text, but he got it. And he was here at church this morning, but I was glad to see him. And maybe he's here this morning to, to confirm to me as he went out the door. I said, well, how's things are going down there? He said, God's at work. You know, the last time I talked to him, talked to him, he was telling me how bad things was. But he said, God's at work. He said, God's doing things that I never, you know, never would have believed. God's using that to touch people and to bless and meet needs. I thought, boy, that's the way it is. You know, God can use something really bad to do something really good. Probably folks get saved out of that deal. You know, life-changing event comes like that. But God's doing great things. He said, he can say God's hand at work. You know, uh, you know, my friend, I thought about this. I've asked y'all to pray for him. My friend from up in Jackson County, Y'all pray for him. His name's Keith Nations. I know Adam knows him, and maybe some more here. I know Jason and 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 uh, and, and they, some of them there uh, know him there. And and I just ask y'all to pray for him. But I was up there to see Keith there the other day. He got a bad diagnosis. That's just all they are to it. They they ain't no way of making it uh, sound no better. He's going to Texas, hopefully to get a, a better um, um, uh, possibilities of helping him. Let's just pray for that. But uh, he's telling me there Thursday, he said, so-and-so come down here. And he said, I just got talking to him the other day. And, and I said, do you know the Lord? He said, do you know the Lord? He told him that. And I thought, you know, uh, he's got an awful bad diagnosis. I can't see nothing good as far as that goes. But he's talked to folks since that happened. You know, if somebody could come to know the Lord, uh, you know, God can take bad things and turn them into something good. Are you with me here tonight? You know, bad things come our way. They may be somebody that he witnessed to that see God through this deal. And, and even though something really bad's happening to him, 
you know, somebody might see the Lord out of it, okay? That's just the way it works. You know, God will, he will do uh, uh, some, some really good things out of some really, really bad situations. There are times, I believe, that, that bad things happen, folks, to get our attention, okay? Sometimes we maybe need our attention, God, and, and God will allow bad, I think I've seen that, God will allow bad things to happen to get our attention and, and bring good out of it. Sometimes I think bad things happen to slow us down. Slow us down and let us just remember who's in control and who's taking care of us. I believe God, and that's a good thing, ain't it? Bad thing, but it's a good outcome, okay? When we get slowed down and we realize who's in control, to remind us, I believe a lot of times bad things come our way to remind us what really matters. How about that? I believe I've seen that. Uh, things come our way to remind us what really matters. A lot of things we get caught up in and run after don't really matter. Bad things happen at times to turn hearts to God. I believe that for sure. Bad things happen at times to turn hearts to God, and hearts turned to God, folks, is a good thing. Okay? It may be bad things that works about to get that to happen, but when folks' hearts turn to God, that's a good thing. Remember, all things are, are not good. All things are not good. Amen? All things are not good, but all things that work together for the good to those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Uh, we can read that over in Romans 8 and 28. Also, when things are not good, you know, uh, remember that. Don't forget what it said all through them times. When it got worse and worse for Joseph, it said, and God was with him. Amen. Don't forget that. But I hope that be help to you tonight. I'm going to ask Renata to come. Maybe get a verse of a song. Maybe you need encouragement tonight in some way or another. Maybe something's going on you just don't know. Well, folks, a lot of times we don't know. Most of the time we don't know. Well, we're going to see the bigger picture one of these days, and God's got a plan. God's got a plan, and God's doing great things, I believe. And, uh, and, and we never know what God's going to use bad things to turn out to be something really good. I'm going to ask you to stand. You may want to come pray for somebody here tonight. You may pray for for yourself there are some discouragement in your life. Maybe you look back and you see something that happened over the years and say, boy, God had it. He had it the whole time. And I just want to come and thank him tonight because he had it. He knowed what he was doing because that helped me in my walk with God, helped me to grow closer to God. And I just want to come thank him that God's in control. Don't know your heart tonight, but there might be something you want to come to this altar and pray about here. And it's open right now, and, and you ought to come and talk to God. No one knows what the Lord foresees, but I know He knows what's best for me in His time. Oh, in His time, there's victory. Just like Job in ashes he sat, sores on his body, he lost all he had. His wife said, why don't you curse God and die? But Job was firm in the things he replied. In his time, oh, in his time, there's victory for Everybody can and will, let's come and go to the Lord and try our deep. The beauty we shared is so great to behold. From each fallen raindrops to the lilies below. Then springtime passes as winter unfolds. But death brings new life in the Bible, we're told. In his time, oh, in his time, there's victory for me. No one knows what the Lord foresees, but I know he knows what's best for me. In his time, oh, in his time. There's victory for me. Amen. Amen. Is, uh, is anybody?
tonight if you got anything you'd want to say or make mention of or thank God for tonight. Anybody? Anybody? Anybody else? Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Justice. Anybody else or something else need to be mentioned? Nothing else. I appreciate you being here tonight. Thank God for you. And I hope and pray you've got something out of this word tonight. There's nothing else to be said. I'm going to ask Shiloh if he'll dismiss us in prayer. And I'll catch you at the back corner door.